Call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to Rocket. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie-style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap, and she takes the bite! Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six-inch sub. I'm Little Teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, and here is my spout. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. (laughs) This is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. to the couch. I'm so excited to be here this evening. Um, It's been one of those kind of, oh, I don't know, four or five days when I'd actually like to be drinking a glass of red wine right about now. Um, And uh, Welcome back to the KLRN studios in the girl chat here uh, to Politibunny. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. I love being on the couch. This couch is very comfy. I agree. We need booze. I could definitely use some booze. Can we do booze? Actually, I, I used to do apple juice, so I'm going to stick with apple juice. Yeah, apple juice. I, got a big old, I got a big old thing of water, but I'm telling you, what a day, what a yesterday, what a weekend. <laughs> what a year. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like, it's almost like I regretted like a week ago, something happened. Like a week and a half ago, I said, I'd like to say we've reached peak stupid, but I'm scared. I like never should have put that out in the ether. You should never, because it it always gets dumber. Um, It always gets worse. (sighs) And just when you think that it can't get any worse, it does, and something worse happens. And like an Adam Schiff thing that is, you know, Adam's been around, though. It's been three years of Adam. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised what's happening with Adam Schiff. But in case you miss it and you were under a rock today, God love you. Um, Adam Schiff, apparently. You're lucky. We don't just love you. You are so lucky. You're a smarter person than we are. Uh, You know, Adam Schiff. It turns out he was hanging out with the whistleblower before the complaint was even filed. So, uh, and then, of course, the whole timing thing with the August changing of the form seems really convenient. 
Um, so basically, it looks like Schiff has been manipulating this entire thing from the get-go to try and get rid of Trump because the Russia collusion hoax has fallen apart. Yada, yada, yada. Everything is stupid. Merry Everything is stupid. And what started off the stupid was how he opened that hearing with the DNI. I mean, he just could not have made himself any less suitable <laughs> to run these intel committee hearings God. Well, if you he know, tried think about it though this is the same guy who was trying to get naked pictures of trump i mean yeah, i know no, that, phone people, call, that phone call is the best i mean they forget that this is who he really is and that there was a reason donald trump called him adam shit i mean it's not because he was just being trump i think adam earned it um yeah, yeah so yeah he did this whole parody dialogue thing <laughs> What the hell was that? Oh, if you hear squeaking in the background, folks, um, I probably should do a corgi disclaimer. Um, there is a corgi puppy at my feet with a chew, and hopefully he doesn't bark. But he is beeping and chirping and chipping and doing all kinds of corgi puppy stuff. Puppy things. Yeah. He's puppy things. So um, you've heard about Casper probably on Twitter and in social media. He's more popular than I am now. So um, if you hear him, that, that's not me squeaking. That's the dog. I swear to God, it's not me squeaking. And if you hear some really horrible noises that sound like a bomb going off, that's my great Dane trying to come through the door. I don't know why he decided to do that a few minutes ago, but I'm like, this is not new, dude. Um <laughs> Oh, it's the producer. <laughs> yeah, see, now my mic is working right, and I was muted when I said that. Actually, it's me. Stacy's just being kind. Uh, I'm blaming it on her dog. I gotcha. Right. Uh, but no, so if you hear the squeaking, I apologize. It's it's the corgi. It's not anything weird with me, which is, you know, it's possible. But no. Um, but yeah, it's been an interesting week, month, year. It's only going to get worse. You know, Bernie had a, a heart thing today. Did you see that? I did, and we wish him all the best in his we recovery. Do. He is a husband and a father. He is. However, he's I a think lunatic, but you know. he's a lunatic. He, <laughs> I'm not going to deny this. He is a socialist lunatic, but he's he been is. a consistent socialist lunatic. He the is. one thing you have to say about Bernie Sanders is he's honest. Mm-hmm. He lets you know exactly who he is, exactly. and he will actually admit he's going to raise middle class taxes. He doesn't pretend he's not a socialist. God no. love him. He is who he is, and he is a socialist. Um, you know, of course, if he was a Republican having chest pains, they'll have to be wishing him death and celebrating his pain. But we aren't like that. So we will wish him well and kiss his campaign goodbye. Yeah, I got to believe that. Yeah, I think he's done. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. He, he may come back because, you know, being cheated out of his, his nomination in 2016 might be enough to come back from something like that. But Yeah, but he's going to miss the debate. Yeah, up on the fifth. Yeah, we got to do another one of those. Oh God! Soon. God, that's only just... that's only is one that night. On the fifth? No, it can't be on the fifth. I think it's like the thirteenth or something. 13th? I can't remember. Yeah, but it's just one yeah. night, and it's CNN and the New York Times sponsoring it this time. Oh dear Lord! Speaking of the New York Times, hey, look at you! Yeah. Speaking of the New York Times, um, a former newspaper, and I steal that shamelessly from Andrew Clavin. Um, <laughs> but. Um, I thought it was very odd that they appeared to break the story about Schiff, except Mm. when you read it, it was totally giving him air cover. Of course. Well, they're not going to call out for what it is. They're going to blame an intern or an aide or some other thing. It's going to be like, well, they contacted his office and it's his job as head of the committee to make sure that they know what's going on and to to give them direction where they go, blah, blah, blah. We all know this is But he tweeted out the essential portion of the complaint on August 28th. This is I, Adam Schiff, okay? Yeah, I caught Adam Schiff. That I saw would have it. been yeah, 15 about days. But that would have been strong. 15 days mm-hmm. between the time he tweeted it. So we would assume that's when he became aware. Right. And the time the whistleblower actually handed in the complaint, but it was still weeks. If he was not, if he didn't somehow have his fingers in this, I swear to God, Sam, they would have had to have somebody following him around Congress and mopping yeah. up mopping up after him because he would have been foaming at the mouth for like four weeks. Well, the letter itself is dated August 12th. And guess who it's addressed to? Schiff is one of the people to Schiff. It's mm-hmm. two people, Schiff and an aide. So Schiff had it on August 12th. Schiff has had his hands in it all along. He is so embarrassed that the Russia collusion thing did not work out. He has been made a fool of just, because he said he had concrete proof exactly. that Trump did it. He never produced the proof. He looks like a schmuck. He tries again. He looks even schmuckier. But what they're going to do is they're going to run cover for him. They're going to pretend that it's Trump's fault somehow that he did this. I mean, it's going to be not Schiff's fault. 
but we all know it's Schiff's fault. Um, Megan Kelly uh, actually talked about Schiff, and she came out and said, so basically he's been working on this from the beginning. He had his hands in it, yada, 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 which is what most sane people understand. They are ripping her apart on Twitter for saying basically what happened. Well, but they're going to rip her apart no matter what, because she once crossed over to the oh, left sure. side. So, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, trust me, um, if you were anywhere even sane about Donald Trump and said, you know, I don't like what he stands for during the primaries, he made you uncomfortable. I, I know you were the same way. We're very, very much, this is not a guy for us. And if you have figured out that the guy won and you can't put your thumb up your ass and sit around hoping for the best and praying Democrats don't destroy this country, then you're a sellout. And I'm sorry, I knew I was going to do this. But at my time, my timeline looks like Megan's. Uh, I'm getting accused of being a sellout for clicks and taps, trying to make money. And it's just like, no, guys, we grew up. We understood that once he won, it was time to go, well, he sucks. we got to figure out how to make this work. If you well, want to sit around bitching and moaning, you're going to end up with an even nastier situation. And I'm just, I'm just done with this sanctimonious crap from these people mm -hmm. who can, they think they can sit around doing nothing and that the country will not implode with a Democrat in charge. Well, I mean, I think Ben Shapiro put it best. Never Trump ended the night of the election. Yeah. Like, we got Trump. So all you can do from there is call balls and strikes. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I have a couple really big problems with what's going on right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's very apparent to me. And, you know, I guess the entire left-wing media lives under a rock because all of a sudden you were seeing these tweets. Oh, my God. Bill Barr had an unannounced trip to Italy. I'm like, yeah, he's going to check out Misfood. Misfood, however you say it. He said he was doing this months ago. Where I know he said he was doing this months ago, but it's like, yeah, I know. I know what's going on in Italy. I know why they want to talk to the Australians. I get why they're talking to the Ukrainians. Like, n none of yeah. this is a mystery if you've been paying even. A I mean, even Politico wrote yeah. about the Ukrainian <laughs> connection through Aunt Andrew, is it Andrea Chalupa, I think? It's Chalupa. Chalupa. All I can think yeah. of is Taco Bell the when Taco I hear Bell that name. The Taco Bell lady, yeah. The Taco Bell lady. You know, the <laughs> yeah. Chalupa lady, they did, they did like a long think piece on everything that had gone on between her and the DNC yeah. yep. and the Ukrainian embassy. This was like yeah. not a secret. Nope, not at all. And apparently it was a okay. It was A-OK -okay for Hillary's campaign to be doing these things behind the back. You know? Oh, my goodness. He's pressuring, <laughs> pressuring the Ukraine and the Australians and the Italians. And he even talked to the U.K. prime minister. No kidding. Yeah. But, you know, Trump made a phone call to the Ukrainians about wanting to find out what happened. And he heard about Joe Biden. And so now, of course, Trump should be impeached. Well, <laughs> you know, you have all of these people, like honest brokers coming out of, you know, the bureau former bureaucrats going... Uh, no, if a cabinet member needs to interact with somebody from another government, the president always makes the ask. Right. I mean, and, and treaties with all these countries. He has every right. right on law enforcement investigations. That's it what we do. Completely within his power and his right to ask these questions. But the problem is people are stupid. I mean, and, and it's a problem because they don't understand what's really happening. And I mean, you know, uh, Di once pointed out that, like, politically, people like us, we're Ferraris because this is all we do. And then most people are like bicycles because they don't do shit about it, right? So I was thinking about that because we understand, okay, this all makes sense. And this is what a president would do. And what Barr is doing makes total sense because there may have actually been collusion in 2016, but not what they think it was. Um, so we get it. But a lot of people are like, duh, they said Trump did something bad and beach and beach. And they don't know any better. And even when you're, like, informed, reading through this crap is like Japanese stereo instructions backwards and in Braille. I mean, it makes no sense when you read through the documents. So people just don't know any better. And so they look to the media, and the media is like, yeah, Schiff didn't do anything wrong. <clears throat> you know, it was all Trump. They totally buy into that. So then they're screaming at people who get it that we're liars and that we're selling out for Trump. Here is the theorist. Yeah, we're the conspiracy theorists. You ever notice that when we're debunking their conspiracies, we're the conspiracy theorists. We're the crazy ones. We're the ones out there with tinfoil or whatever. And it's, but it's legit. What we believe is a conspiracy isn't the best thing to do to let the investigation roll and then you can call us stupid. Yeah, how about that? But they can't. They don't want it to get that far. And that's why I think people are so angry like at Megan. In fact, people were screaming at me even. They don't want a voice of reason. They, they can't deal with the idea of common sense and what's happening in this situation with Trump. 
It's got to be either completely Trump is the best president he has ever or never Trump. And you got people in the middle going, well, Trump kind of sucks here, but he did something great over here. And it looks like this was okay with the situation. And man, shit looks like he does some nasty stuff. They don't want those conversations because then people really start talking. They need us all screaming at each other. That's what I noticed. Is, you know, I just basically said, I don't blame Trump, who got really pissed off today on Twitter. I don't blame him. He dropped the bullshit. And I was like, hell yeah, it's about time. He drops a bullshit in a tweet, and I'm, I'm, I'm pumping my fist. I'm ready. And I don't always like yeah, his go, tweet. go. Like, no, neither do I. Sometimes you know? I read his tweets, and I'm like, oh, jeez. God, please take his phone Stop. away. Stop. Delete, but delete. Today I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> it's time. Let's go. Kick some ass. Did you see that picture? <laughs> Which the one with the, the, the from the Nickelback? The what? The Nickelback one? No, I didn't see Nickelback. Oh my God. So he like has Joe Biden saying, I didn't know anything about my son's business dealings in the Ukraine. And then you have Chad Kroger coming on singing the song Photograph, right? <laughs> And then they pop up the photo, and they've changed the photograph in the frame to the one of him golfing with the Ukrainian, <laughs> the Ukrainian guy from Burisma and his son and their buddy. Yeah. It looks like he wi- he he wiped his timeline. Oh my god, I love this nickel bag, dude. <laughs> Who wiped his timeline? Trump. Unless no, he did Twitter. not. Unless Twitter's broke. I'm going to check that out while y'all are talking. Um, well, maybe they maybe they decided to suspend him <laughs> like him. Kamala Harris asked. He's so awful. No, the last she's time just, I saw she's him, Kamala dude. the cop. She's, she's Kamala so, the cop. She's That's an authoritarian it. cow. Um, the last it's, thing I saw him tweet was it, it was a footage from the, like O'Hare Airport, you know, with the plane, and it's the one of the luggage carts is going crazy, and it says Democrats on it, and it's spinning around, and it's running into the plane. The plane says America. And then this huge, like, plow comes in and knocks the card over and it says Trump on it. I just laughed. At I mean, I, I giggle at dumb stuff anymore, but, um, yeah, Kamala wants to, to get Trump suspended. You know. Yeah. She's, she's she a- wrote a letter to Jack. <laughs> she's such a dummy. She well, and then you got Tulsi Gabbard. This is my personal opinion. The Democrats are so stupid. <laughs> they should be putting Tulsi Gabbard right out front because mm-hmm. I think our good friends Brad and Ordy would even vote for her because they think she's hot. <laughs> she's so hot. She's so hot, that streak in the hair. Um, but she actually likes America. Yeah. Right? She does. Um, she served in the military. Um, she says things like, yeah, I think this impeachment is a little weak. Um, she says things like, yeah, Trump probably shouldn't be suspended. Better. <laughs> that just seems really wrong to me. It's yeah. about freedom of speech. Yeah, she's, you know. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Jeff likes her too. <laughs> yeah, dumbass likes her too. I'm not being mean to him. He actually likes that. So I, he's weird that way, I guess. But yeah, uh, and she's beautiful. I don't. I, I agree. Like, there was a video of her working out, and she's all kicking ass. She's like gorgeous. God, I want to be that. <laughs> yeah, if I did those things, I would kill myself. Like she's jumping up on a bench, and she's got a little weight, and she's not even sweating. I'm sweating watching it, you know. Um, but she is. She's beautiful. And she's got some decent ideas, but she's also kind of batshit, so she's perfect for the Democrats. You know, her foreign policy is batshit, but oh she, my would appeal, God. she would appeal to center-left people. She would appeal to left-leaning libertarians. True. True. She, you know, she might lose some of the radicals, but if she was VP with, like, a wacky president like Elizabeth Warren... Yeah. But no, they just want to completely shut her out and shut her down. Well, they're going to do that. Call her her. alt right because she believes in free speech. They're going to do that to her. They're going to do that to Yang because Yang is actually not horrible and disgusting. He's kind of an idiot, but he's a likable idiot. Oh, he's a very likable idiot. Um, but yeah, I like that he won't wear a tie to the debates. I do too. I dig it. And he makes (laughs) jokes about being Asian. You know. (laughs) I know a lot of Asians. I know. Or no, I'm Asian. I know a lot of doctors. (laughs) That was great. I'm good at math. You know, he just makes jokes, and it's good. We, we need that because Democrats take themselves too seriously. Of course, he's thinking he can give us all $1,000 a month without totally bankrupting the company, company, country. It's been a long day, and taxing us into oblivion. But, hey, he's likable. So he's done. He's done. Tulsi's done. Anybody, I think the three they're going to leave alone. Well, I thought it was Bernie, but now I think Bernie's Kent. I don't know. But Biden, Harris, and, and Warren, although I think Biden's almost done, too. No, Harris has been, like, sinking like a rock. I know. I still think they want her in some capacity, though, because she's got that 
They tried to pull I the think Obama thing. Save her. her for Attorney General, which terrifies me. God, that is awful. Isn't that awful? Oh, why did you want her to be like Secretary of State? Oh my you god. You go to jail, you go to jail, you go to jail, <laughs> you get <laughs> bombed, you Not get for bombed. You. Yeah. Oh my god. God. Oh, we would be in so much trouble. No, but he couldn't say that loud. Nay, nay, cancel, cancel. Get that out of the. <laughs> no, that's terrible. I hadn't even thought about that. And then, yeah, Warren on the Supreme Court or something. That would be. Ew. <laughs> no, I think if they get to nominate, they're going to put Obama on it. I agree. I agree. They'll want to put him on because, you know, he's a constitutional scholar and stuff. He's a constitutional scholar and he's also not that old. So, yeah, you know, he's. Good long time. Good long time of Obama as a. Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. It's not good. Just hard though, wasn't he? Just hard? I don't. I know she was. She was okay. Maybe I. Maybe I was confusing. She too. got into trouble. I don't remember what she did though. It's been a while. I have to look back at my craziness and my conspiracy theories on my timeline. Right. Because we're Here's so- the other thing that really gets me going about this whole situation though with the Ukrainian call. Mm-hmm. So we have a man running for president who, up until two weeks ago, almost looked like the definitive nominee because you couldn't break. The minority vote on him and without the minority vote in the democratic party you're not going to win right um so we have this man who has the appearance of pay for play in the ukraine yeah and the appearance a much bigger problem in china yeah, I mean, they literally John Kerry and and Joe Biden walked away from the table with China and said, "Please go build all these little islands in the South China Sea." <laughs> yeah, as one point five billion dollars was going into their son's hedge fund. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're totally disgusting and dirty, and so, but oh, nobody wants to talk Trump about that. Trump isn't supposed to question this just because Joe's running against him. Because what we really want is a corrupt crap for president. Right. Well, at this point, it is we'll do anything to get rid of the orange man. And that's what we're saying, because, you know, if if they really go after Biden and they they said they're going to go after Trump, they're going to push this and they go through and they do discovery. Hillary's in trouble. Obama's in trouble. We're going to see a lot of biggies in trouble and they don't care anything to destruct and destroy Trump. And I think that's what they're trying to do. I mean, if they lose Biden. Oh, well, they don't mind losing Biden. It's. It's so obvious what they're trying to do, too, Mm -hmm. is they're trying to destroy everybody. Pompeo, Barr, Trump, Pence, Kavanaugh, all of them. They've been doing this for three years. I mean, it reminds me of Feinstein when she sat on Christine Blasey Ford's letter. They were doing Kavanaugh's, his whole hearing. and It was looking like, okay, he's going to make it through just like Gorsuch, pretty cute, you know, dumb, going, moving on. And when it got to that point... All of a sudden, there's this magical letter from Christine Blasey Ford. Kavanaugh tried to, you know, sexually harass me and assault me in college. And we end up with a month of this crap that was never founded. They couldn't prove it. They tried to destroy this man's life. And that's just because Trump nominated him. Oh, yeah. And then we find out in the horrible New York Times opinion piece, the book that those ladies actually wrote, there was a piece of news in it. Yeah. Her primary star witness was threatened. To back up her story with personal destruction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the one gal couldn't remember anything. Yeah, it was, it was so bad. Oh, that was the gal that couldn't remember yeah. anything. She's like, I, this doesn't sound familiar to me, but I'd like to be supportive of my friend. And yeah. they just kept coming back to her and telling her, uh, you need to be a little stronger about this or we're going to tell everybody that you're a pill popper. We're going to ruin your life if you don't. Ruin your life. Yep. This is just some evil ass people. So that's what drives you insane. It's but that, I mean, that just tells you nothing about what she said was true. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they wrote a whole book about this crap. Um, Trump may be no, a The sh- only book you read about that is Molly Hemingway's. Very I, I, good, by the way. Molly and Carrie wrote an excellent yep. book, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but Trump is a schmuck. But he's outwardly a schmuck. When he does something wrong, you, you can't miss it because he wants you to know he did it. He's not shy about being And he's a not going to apologize for no. it. No, and that's what makes me nuts about these people who are pretending they're so great and don't do anything wrong. They are slimy as F, and they're getting caught. And I, I just, I, yeah, maybe I need more than apple juice tonight. <laughs> Stick a little vodka in it. Oh, my God. I, and the bad thing is I read this crap day in and day out. Yep. And I'm surrounded by it, and there are days where I'm just like, I'm done. It's over. Who cares? I'm going to go join, you know, V-Score or something. <laughs> that makes me nuts. But then I go look at my dog and all is well. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, 
the next. I, what do you think Nancy Pelosi's going to do with Schiff? I don't think she's going to do a damn thing. I, I think, mean, he can't run that hearing. He's not going to do anything. She's not going to, no, it's going to be exactly as it is. They're not going to change anything. He's going to run the hearing. There's no way she'll do anything. I don't believe her. I mean, you've seen what she's done. The sad thing is Nancy Pelosi kind of had a brain going here. She kind of understood that pushing to impeach Trump was bad. Like she got that politically, this was not a great thing. That 67% of the country did not want this. Even yeah. Democrats are like, ah, quit wasting time on it. Move on. Uh, but you know tried. what happened? She got hammered. She couldn't do it anymore. She was getting pushed on both sides. Mm-hmm. No, she has 111 primary challenges in the House. Oh, yeah. Of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah. And that's the far left who is going to beat anyone who doesn't support an impeachment inquiry right over the head. Yep. It's going to be really bad. And, and this- one of them is Jerry Nadler. Of course. Good old Jerry. <laughs> pants to his chin, Nadler. That's so fun. Yeah. I don't know why he doesn't get new pants. I, he lasts like 500 pounds. It's okay. Buy some new pants. Oh, my God. The angry gnome. He makes me insane. I love watching Doug Collins whoop him up. It's so fun. I know. Doug <laughs> I love, I like Rev Doug Collins because he's so quiet and southern. Uh, and he's, makes actually, them all he's actually my parents' rep. God, he's I awesome. actually know Tom's director. I he is, he is just like that in real life. I just like it because it's like, I'm going to kick your ass and sound like I'm real nice doing it. I just love it. I just sit and go, hee, 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 I watch it. It's so dumb because yeah. I'm such a political nerd. I yeah. used to sit and watch cartoons and laugh like that, but not anymore. Now it's, now it's well, Doug Collins. I'm, I'm pretty fond of uh, Jim Jordan at this point, too, and Ratcliffe. And a few <laughs> I other love ones, watching so. Jim Jordan smile when he's trying not to. Yeah, I know. Like, I got you now. (laughs) I know. I'm watching, like, when Candace Owens lit up those people telling her that it was, I can't remember the doctor's name. Of course, it was a white woman Mm -hmm. telling Candace Owens about white power and white supremacy and violence against black people. And she's like, you know how I know better? Because I'm black. Oh, I died watching Candace. And what was really great was Jim Jordan's up there going, he, 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 laughing. Candace ripped this woman apart. It was great. Candace can say things. That you and I could not. Yeah, totally. She can play with. But she sometimes, can't. sometimes her. Sometimes she makes. She's gotten so much better over the last yeah. twelve to eighteen months. Yeah. Um, sometimes she used to make me cringe, but I'm like, yeah. she, she knows what she's doing, and she she's okay with it. So you go, girl. Yeah, I don't, you know what? I, it is. I, I don't agree with anybody all the time anymore. I've gotten to a point in my life where I'll disagree with people I really like, even, and it's like, eh, whatever. Um, yeah, there are some things she would say, I'm like, oh, don't do that. Ooh, watch, watch it. <laughs> oh, God, why? But then it's like, okay, I see why you did that, you know. Um, but <laughs> I love Jim Jordan trying to hide laughing at people when he's up there trying to be all professional. It's one of my favorites. But I think Doug Collins has become my number one. Um, yeah. I just don't, I don't want my governor to appoint him to Isaacson's seat. I need him in Nadler's committee. Yes, we need him in Nadler's committee. We need him in one. Nadler's committee. He is the only one who makes Jerry look as stupid as we know he is. Exactly. I love it. I love when he talks about how it's a masquerade. He calls him out on how you guys have been talking about impeaching him for three years. Just do it already. Let's get out there and vote on it. Let's have the, let's go to court. And they, <laughs> I just yep. love it because nobody wants to do that. They just want to pretend they're doing it. So their Democrat base goes, we're going to get him this time. And then they're all excited and they'll vote for him in 2020. Cause they, everything is rad and wrong. They're no, not- I actually think if Nancy Pelosi does not hold the actual vote, yeah. It doesn't help them at all. Oh, I like, agree. If they if they do that, they just they're treating their voters like they're stupid. Well, they've been treating them like they're stupid all along. They pushed this oh, Russian collusion yeah. hoax thing for almost three years. They promised these people that Mueller was going to be the end of Trump. Did you hear what what uh, Schiff said in the press conference today? I did uh, not. I was unplugged. I was he trying to be unplugged. Actually, said when he says. Now, if they don't respond to us and they stonewall, that will be evidence of obstruction. And, you know, that was an article of impeachment against Nixon. I was like, dude, you cannot help but show your cards. You never had a, you never held a card to your chest ever, did you? No. 
God, I know. He's, he never did. So, yeah. he's so desperate for this win. And it's well, personal it's for him. Not, the, first thing, the first thing the White House would do or any of these people are going to do is take him to court and say it's not a legitimate inquiry. They never voted for it. Well, Y'all ready for a I, break? Am I echoing? Am I echoing? Hello, hello, hello. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. No, are they okay. saying you are? I have one annoying chat. I, I hate chats. So you got to remind you guys. And chat people really tick me off. Chat is complaining that I'm echoing, so. Okay. You know, yeah, I don't really care. Probably my fault, but how about a break, you guys? That works. All right. All right. We'll, we will, yeah, if I can find the right buttons to push, we'll be right back. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Out of bed with this crazy feeling in my head. I said, Get up, get your band of red wine. No, get up, get your, get up, get your band of red wine. Welcome, y'all, back to the couch. We're actually very pleased to have with us this evening a man named Jeff Brain. And yes, that's his actual last name. I'm told it set some unrealistic expectations in elementary school. <laughs> um, however, uh, 
And Jeff has created a brand new social media platform called Clout Hub. And I have had the pleasure of understanding where the vision of this platform is going long term. And so we wanted to give him an opportunity to speak about it this evening. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Stacy. It's good to be with you. Hey, yeah. Jeff. Hi. This is Sam. How's it going? Good, Sam. How are you tonight? I am peachy keen. Thanks for coming on with us tonight. Now, um, I'm going to let Stacy run this, but I'll probably pop in and annoy you both. So just a warning. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so talk to, let, let the audience know a little bit, um, about why you decided to jump into this particular industry that seems to take, um, so many hits from so many sides. Well, I, I was a, uh, civic leader in Los Angeles for many years and, and worked on a lot of projects and community efforts and, and things to try and make life better for people. And, um, a couple of years ago, I started to try and use Twitter on my efforts, and I found it to be rather limiting. And and then, lo and behold, I got shadow banned for no good reason. And I found that so incredibly unacceptable um, that I decided I'll create a platform uh, that gives people free speech and protects their rights. And that's what I started to do. And um, I was uh, mid-2018. Uh, that I actually started it, and uh, um, Cloud Hub. You know, our communities are and society is so divided today, and you know, you almost feel like it's a powder keg ready to blow up. And and yet, most social media platforms are silencing voices, deciding what's acceptable to talk about. Um, you know, uh, we're focused on likes and follows and clickbait and lots of things that don't matter. Um, what's missing is a social network where people can socialize in a way that also unites people, solves the, their problems, improves our communities, enriches lives, and advances society. And that's what Cloud Hub is intended to be. It's it's not a red platform or a blue platform. It's a platform for everybody to come together and start to work on a future uh, that is 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 better uh, for everybody. <clears throat> And the platform itself will, will have a couple of different features that allows people to interact in different ways. Um, they're not all available today, but if you could give people maybe a little preview of what's coming. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So, yes, um, as I started to build the platform, I realized that there's, when I did research, there's a number of things that people want to do on a social media platform. Um, they, they want to be able to share updates with their friends and family. They want to be able to get their news. They want to be able to entertain themselves and watch videos. Um, and uh, so when I decided to create Cloud Hub, I, I looked at um, the existing social media platforms, which are really quite fragmented. They've been around for 15 years or so. And, and you know, they started out, you know, with uh, Twitter was to keep your friends updated on what you're doing throughout the day. And Facebook was originally to meet girls in college. <laughs> People they, don't remember that. <laughs> right? I re yeah, I remember those days. But, um, uh, so what I did in CloudHub, my vision for CloudHub is, is to give you, you know, in, in the technology today, we can, we can really do that in one platform. So we'll have what's called a public hub, and that's existing today. And that's sort of like Twitter, where you go to the public town square and you can talk to everybody publicly, you know, and share your ideas and concerns um, and meet people. And then um, we'll have a private hub as well where when you don't want to be talking publicly with strangers and other people, you will go into the private hub and that's where you talk just with your friends and your family and you share your birthday parties, your, you know, what you did the other night, you know, um, but you share it privately. And then we will have groups, but our groups are very different. Our groups are, uh, we'll have templates for nonprofits, a template for a teaching group, a different template for a fan club and a different template for content creators. Um, so that you're, you know, it's very refined and, and specialty uh, groups. And we think that's uh, really important. You could actually run a nonprofit through our groups. Um, and then we, we'll have a newsroom. We, in fact, we just launched the newsroom last week. Um, so when you, the newsroom is a news aggregator that brings in news, all the top news and different subjects, sports, health, technology, business, politics. 
and uh, gives people the ability to stay up to date. And, and what is amazing is how when you put that news with the public hub and it's it's one button away from sharing news into the public hub, you know, it's really so easy and it's amazing. It, it really empowers the users. Uh, we'll also have, and we'll be introducing this in probably early November, uh, video channels just like YouTube, you know. Um, and uh, so it'll be an alternative for content creators. Uh, they no longer have to be on YouTube. And, and what we're going to do different is that we will give uh, content creators control over their content as well as their ability to earn income with YouTube. They're at the Sub, you know, at the at the at the whim of the YouTube gods, so to speak. And you look at Steven Crowder with 3.1 million people, and who said something that YouTube didn't like, and they demonetized him overnight. So he lose, loses his livelihood, and uh, that won't happen because he'll control his. If he was to choose to come over to Cloud Hub, he would uh, control his income. Uh, and then, and then a feature that you've not seen before is called the Civic Hub, and. Um, that gives you access to government meetings, you know, city council meetings, resources, community uh, groups, and also election information. And really what we're doing here, you know, so we got these different features, but really what this does is tie it all together so you have one stop social media that you can come on to. And we give you the ability to meet other people, hold virtual meetings. Um, and and go beyond just words and actually take action to to improve your community or address issues in your community and, and even interact with your elected officials. Um, the the real beauty of a platform like this is through the bringing the masses together and, and uniting them, um, regardless of whether they're left or right. We all care about our communities, um, but you give them a tremendous amount of ability to uh, shape the future and hold our elected officials accountable. So um, this is Sam. Hi, I have a question for you about um, because, you know, we have Gab out there that tried this whole platform about, well, you come over here and say whatever you want. And it quickly turned into just a crap show of awful. Um, I, I'm just curious. I, I think I applaud the idea of free speech. I applaud the idea of supporting people and having their ideas. Um, but I, how do you plan on um, keeping it where people you know, like you keep the dregs out without limiting freedom of speech? Yeah, so uh, what our approach is that we do not limit speech on issues. Uh, we, you know, you can be on any side of, of you know, pro-life or, uh, you know, pro-choice or, or pro-Second Amendment or, or pro-getting rid of guns. Um, we're never going to uh, silence any participants of those discussions on issues. That's very important to have speech on issues where we where we might step in is if somebody starts to call somebody uh, the N word or the B word. In fact, we're using artificial intelligence to actually uh, capture the you know see if somebody's using those words in a post. And when they go to post that post, you know, to, to publish it, um, if they used a you know there's a there's a list of words that you know are typically racial you know derogatory terms. If, if somebody uses those terms and, and then they go to publish their post, there will be a pop up that says you've used, you know, terminology that's not acceptable on Cloud Hub. Please, you know, edit it or delete it. But it never lands on our platform. It never gets posted. And, and it's very important to me that Cloud Hub be a place for dialogue and, and intelligent, you know, conversation that's productive, not become a cesspool. And uh, it, the same thing happens on images. If you if you go to post an image, it is looked over by artificial intelligence. And if it is, you know, porn or naked people or people doing something they're not supposed to be doing, it will not post on CloudHub. But CloudHub will be a, a, you know, a clean site. It's very important to me. Now, I will also tell you that uh, free speech attorney Ron Coleman um, and I have spoken numerous times and he really likes what we're doing. He thinks it's very different and it, it everybody's treating being treated exactly the same. Uh, the AI is not, you know, looking at whether you're conservative or, you know, liberal. It, it just treats everybody the same. And that's very, very important. And one thing I found out in the last couple of weeks is like this whole uh with cancel culture would be much harder to do on Cloud Hub because right now 
the max is 500 posts. So the posts from when you were 16 probably wouldn't be there 10 years from now. And eventually the user will have the ability to decide how often their posts get deleted. Yeah, it, that's very important. Thanks, Stacy, for bringing that mm -hmm. up. You know, our, what we, you know, listen, people go to jail and they get out of jail and, and, the, and they're, they're, you know, we give them a new chance, right? But if you posted something on Twitter when you were 14 and then you win the Heisman Trophy, you know, and they go back and look at that and, and, and ruin your life over that, right? And so uh, I just have always felt that um, what we post on social media shouldn't become a permanent record on our life. And so what CloudHub will do in the near future is give the user the ability to say, I want my post to, to not be viewable after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, you know, and that way it just goes away, you know, um, so. So it sounds like even if as a conservative, I said the word pansy and a, a leftist said the word pansy, it won't happen where I get suspended and they don't because there is a preference there in the algorithm because your AI doesn't care if I'm Bob or Jane or if I vote for Republicans or Democrats. If I use X word, I'm done. I can't post it. Right. So exactly. there is no, there's no way that people can accuse CloudHub of playing favorites. Right. Uh, and our and our terms of service are very transparent, and so is our our privacy policy is very transparent, and that's very important to us. Uh, again, I was a social media user, and you know, I I just felt that um, it's very important that we treat everybody the same way, and and that you allow free speech on subjects. I think it's very wrong that you know, on on the day that the unplanned movie was released, regardless of your position on that, we can all agree that the fact that their, their Twitter account was suspended that day is unacceptable. Or that live action, you know, Lila Rose's, uh, you know, account consistently gets taken down. Yeah. You know, it, it, it shouldn't matter. We, I, I got to tell you, you know, it might be the right that's being, you know, abused right now. But if the right all goes away, it they're not going to stop there. They're going to sure. then take it to the rest of the people who remain. And it, it, we should all agree as Americans and as, as people that um, speech should be uh, protected. Uh, you know, if, if somebody starts to, like on our platform, if you dox somebody, regardless of who you are, that, that's unacceptable. You'll get warned uh, and, and it'll be taken down. You know, we don't accept doxing whatsoever. Um, we don't accept bullying uh, behavior, you know, trying to intimidate people. Um, but you can talk about any uh, issues as long as it's about an issue. So we have a, a question in the chat room. Um, Sharko wants to know what keeps big tech from shutting you down like they did Gab. And he's talking about, you know, Gab had their host, their host shut them down because of reports from, um, well, there's a, a lot of questions about why, but Gab got shut down by their host at one point. So, you know, that's that's what he wants to know. How do you keep sure. big tech from shutting you down? Well, first of all, um, I, Gab, Gab um, as was discussed earlier, allowed their platform to come. Uh, you know, I, I you know, I know he, he was it became like the Wild West, quite frankly, on Gab. And, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, when we were looking at Cloud Hub, we looked at some things in Gab and we went to some groups and I had all my staff there and we we're looking at their groups to figure out how they're doing, you know, what their groups look like. And it was all naked girls, you know, and, and there was there's no age requirement. You know, there was nothing that said you got to be over a certain age to get into this group. Right. It was just terrible. Um, so I think that kind of contributed a little bit to some of that. You know, it just you know, they couldn't get their apps approved through the app stores. Um, and I admire him for being so persistent and stuff. But but I think he let the platform uh, you know, go a little bit to the side where it shouldn't go. And, and we're not going to do that now. Also, um, our platform is not for the right. It's not for the left. It's for everybody. And I think that as we move forward and we start to show that and uh, the access to government and, and, the, and the, the focus, you know, right now the focus of social media is all look at me, right? I got this many likes. It's creating a narcissistic culture. But Cloud Hub is designed to promote unity and service and you know, you'll still have your fun on your 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 social media, but but we'll also have the ability for you to take that next step and and work together. So, um, 
And as, and as far as, you know, getting taken down, you know, um, we have uh, on our on our <clears throat> team is, is Ron Coleman, a free speech attorney. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and he's talking about putting a panel together of other free speech attorneys that actually CloudHub would give them control if there was ever an issue that came up about whether this is appropriate or not. We would turn it over to this panel of free speech attorneys um, and then they would uh you know, hear it out and, and make a decision. But, you know, so we're kind of taking steps to make sure we're we're um, doing everything right. So I'm, I'm curious now, um, do you know what got you shadow banned on Twitter? Besides my dog barking in the background? Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. And, and of course, I didn't know, even I was shadow banned until, you know, there's an app that you could use. Sure. Um, but no, I, I don't know. In fact, at one point, they, they had me, you know, how they, how they suggest you boost a post. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. I paid, paid a hundred dollars to have the boost post boosted. And it, and it, that I got my account shadow banned immediately. So like after six seconds of that thing being posted, I was supposed to get 44,000 or something, you know, views. It got shadow banned. I got three, you know, and I tried oh to, my God. That's terrible. Uh, did you get your money back? <laughs> no, I, I, I actually, you know, contacted them and well, it's not my department, you know, and, then I get to the sales, you know, the advertising department. Well, that you got to talk to the other department, you know, and never got the money back. But no. I figured it's going to be it's going to be the most expensive hundred dollars Jack ever got. <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah, that's what's so crazy is when you've been shadow banned and you don't know why. That's the hardest thing, uh, I think, for people besides getting suspended for using the word pansy, which is a big one right now for some reason. You know, a flower gets you suspended on um, Twitter or lock. Somebody you know. got suspended for calling somebody Becky. I mean, it's just, I get called Becky every day. You know what? I know. What? <laughs> I, know. So I get ridiculous. called worse than that. I just yeah, ignore it. I get called. I just, I, it, it, I just think it, it. There's a very uneven approach to it, right? Yes. Because we don't report a lot of people on the right. We we never really have. No. It's always it's always the perpetually offended. That are that are doing it at social. I don't have the right. energy to be perpetually offended anymore, so I don't know <laughs> how they do it. So, but yeah. I think this sounds really cool. So, um, is it right now? Is it is it just an app, or is there a desktop, or where are you guys at with your technology side of things? Yeah, so um, we are an app right now, but uh, by hopefully by the end of this month, we'll be also a, a desktop version. So, and then I- Ordy can stop asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Orny! Like, well, when there's a desktop, I need a well, desktop. He's Amish. He can't help it, and he really. I'm sorry. He's. I'm making. You don't know Orty. He is. He thinks he's Amish. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. So desktop, awesome, and then an app, and then um, as far as Twitter goes, are do you are you going to compete with them? Or I mean, how does this work with them as far as like what your end goal is? Do you have a certain number of users that you want or you're just kind of leading by example and hoping your platform grows in that way? Well, um, we actually, you know, Twitter is there. So of course they're there and, but we don't consider ourselves a Twitter. Um, there are other apps that have come out that are alternatives to Twitter. Sure. Uh, we, we will be much more than a Twitter. We're nice. a whole infrastructure. Um, Twitter. If if I if I wanted to just be a Twitter, I could stop now. I actually have an app that many people feel is better than Twitter. In a couple of weeks, we'll have streaming added to it. You know, so we'll be able, sure. every everybody on our platform can stream, and you don't need to go through another app like Periscope. Um, so I think our our platform is really good. And and like I said, we added a news feed uh, last week. So now you got Twitter and smart news combined, you know, type of thing, um, or Flipboard combined, you know, um, yeah. and we'll continue to add. I mean, soon in, in another 45 days, we hope to have our YouTube alternative. It's very powerful, you know, to have all these things together. And uh, and then with the assurance of free speech and privacy, and that's the thing we haven't talked about, but privacy, you know, we actually um, don't collect your data. We ask you for four things. We ask you for your first name, your last name, your phone number only so we can send a code to your phone to verify you're a real person, uh, but we'll never use that phone number. Um, and then an email address. Everything after that is your choice to to enter into the program. Even even if you put your, we don't even ask for your address. You you can put your city and your state, but you can hide that so nobody else sees it. You can choose a button that says don't make it visible. 
Um, but we don't scrape your phone. We don't even take your IP address, you know, yeah. you're, you're entering from. We, we don't take your phone ID, you know. We don't get into your SIM card. We're not tracking you to the mall. The reason we don't do that is because we don't need to do that. Um, we're, not, we're not data mining you because we're not going to drive ads at you. We, we monetize it in a different way. And, uh, but, uh, so our, our policy on privacy is second to none. So it's, you don't care if I go shop at eBay when I've been on your site. You're not looking to see which ads might, you might want to feed me later because you don't care about that. You're just growing your community. That's exactly. right. We don't. And, and, and the other part of that is Jeff also has worked with neuroscience experts. And what they found was those placement of ads in the uh -huh. timeline is actually one of the things that triggers dopamine, which makes you anxious and crabby, a little bit aggressive and some other things over the long term. So <laughs> I must see um, a lot of ads because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. Well, you know, we, we, we see all these young people with ADHD all of a sudden, right? Um, and you, and you look at what these platforms are doing after 15 years and they're really all about 15 years old, but with the dopamine loop, you're really, um, uh, manipulating people's thoughts patterns and and like the ads in the timeline and other things they're doing is is what's called a pattern interrupt they're actually interrupting your thoughts you know you might be sitting there thinking something then you get a beep you know and and uh, you you change your your focus and uh that creates addiction that that does create aggression and and makes you easily agitated um and it actually impacts your ability to learn and so for a lot of children or younger people who have been on social media for most of their life, it, it's having they, they it says they can't even view their future. They can't envision their future because they can't look ahead that way. Um, and then on our platform, because of the design we have um, and, and the incentives that we have, which are more positive, um, it absolutely promotes good choices, promotes mo good mood and cooperation. Um, it actually improves because we're, we're tapping into serotonin and oxytocin. Um, so a completely different approach. And uh, you had asked a question before of how big we get and stuff like that. And, and we're here for real. I mean, I, I plan to be a major player, you know, that goes up against Twitter and Facebook. I'm not going to necessarily look to defeat them. But I think that there's no reason when we put all these different features in one platform and then back it up with we're not – invading your privacy. We're allowing you to speak your mind. Um, we're not allowing people to bully you, you know, um, and we're, we're protecting your health. You know, um, I think that there's no reason why we shouldn't be a billion people. I think that's a really smart way to look at it, the health thing, is that's something people don't really think about with social media. Um, I saw these all these photographs that a uh, photographer did. They remove the phones from people's hands and their like situations, and they look so lonely and depressed and sad because uh, like they're backs to each other, they're not looking at each other. And it was just, I think that's a really interesting point you could make with your platform. Is it's a healthier platform? That's, I hadn't even thought about that because mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you're on Twitter at all too much, and I am because it's, you know, my, my world is my job, by the end of the day, I'm mentally exhausted looking at everybody. So that's a really interesting point about making it mentally healthy and a better place for people to be. I like that. Yep, thank it's you. time to wrap it up, you guys. That was quick. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. If you would like to learn more about um, Clout Hub, where should people go to find out? Sure, they can go to cloudhub.com. And uh, we have information there, and, and we are uh, really excited about all the people that are joining us, and, and we are very thankful for this opportunity, uh, and we, we invite people to come check us out. It's a great app. Uh, it's nice and clean design, easy to understand, and, and, uh, and, and it's for good, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, I, I say all the time, we're using the power of social media for good. All right. Well, I guess that's a really nice note to end on. So thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We're out of here. We're making room for Rick. I got a corgi to put to bed, so I'm out of here, too. Ladies, this was so much fun. I really enjoyed being on the couch. All right. Well, you got to come back to the couch next month. I will be here like every four to six weeks. I promise. I'll be on. I yeah, love it. Yeah, we're going to hold you to that. that. We are going to hold you to that. We we love you guys. You can find me at Cyber Wars Podcast, Stacy at Scott's Fire, F Y R E, 
and Politibunny at Politibunny. But where else? Good night. We love you guys. Night, guys. Night.